Opening range breakout strategy. So if you are a trader, most likely you have heard of this term because this is a very popular strategy. And actually, if you look it up online, you will find, I don't know, a hundred variations of it. So in this video, I will describe how it originally started and who actually invented this strategy. And what can we do today to re-innovate uh, on this popular strategy to make money? Hello everyone, my name is Ali Casey from Stadwaste's channel where we discuss finance, investing, algorithmic trading, and everything else in between. Basically, we want to grow our wealth, we want to grow our portfolio. If you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell as I do post every day on this channel. And it will be amazing if you can smash the like button as this will help me push the investing message out to the world. So first of all, let's understand the opening range breakout strategy. Tony Crable is a commodities uh, trader. So he used to trade the open range basically when the pits open. And that, you know, depends on who you read about. It usually is defined the first one minute, first five minutes, first one hour. So here I mark just five minutes. So this is the bridge pound. And I mark this is the high of the five minute uh, range. And this is the low. So this is between 930 to 9.35. So these are five bars, each is one minute. And this is the low and this is the high. And the strategy says, well, after this, uh, after this period here, then we go long when the price break above and we go short when the price breaks below. So that's the main definition of open range breakout. The guy who invented this strategy is called uh, Tony Crable. He is a commodities trader in the 90s, and he wrote actually a book about this concept back in 1990. Now, since then, he uh, established his own hedge fund. Uh, obviously, he stopped <laughs> telling us about the new innovation on this strategy because, you know, he's making so much money. Why bother with a book, which I totally uh, understand. So currently, he manages over 3.2 billion of uh, private funds and this is his company, Crable Capital Management, and they won numerous awards uh, till even like this year also, <laughs> he won some awards. So obviously he's very successful. Actually, he had a 12-year run of no losses. No losses from 91 till 2002, which was a great bull run, by the way. Now, his book is called Day Trading with Short-Term Price Patterns and Opening Range Breakout. Like I mentioned, he established this, uh, this strategy uh, back in 1990 in this book. Now, this book is not in print anymore, and you know you can get it online, of course. <laughs> but, uh, but if you want to buy a copy, I think you'll find something on eBay or Amazon like for $200 or $300. Also, he wrote a bunch of articles in Stock and, uh, Stocks and Commodities uh, magazine, which also by now they are really old articles but still that's good to know so obviously the guy is very successful i am sure the concept still making him a lot of money now how we can use this strategy of course i have the book and i'll be doing some uh, videos on his strategies but most of the strategies lost its edge by now because there is a reason first of all when he started this strategy it used to be on the futures market and it was on the open cry concept where basically we didn't have electronic markets. Uh, all the future traders were in the pit in Chicago. And there was actually a, a range that sets early in the morning. And then the floor traders trades off that range. And that's what probably you've heard the floor pivots. Also, it's based on that range. And then, uh, you know, you can go long and short based on that. It's an intraday strategy. So for, for you guys who love intraday, this is the best strategy to do. But like I mentioned, the strategy has lost its edge. And the reason because, you know, <laughs> so popular that everybody starts using it and slowly it, it diminishes. And by the time 2008 came in, when all futures went electronic, that open range breakout actually lost its edge. So in this video, we will tackle one feature of how you can manipulate this open range uh, strategy. And the feature I will show you today, it's actually good for currencies because currencies trade 24 hours, of course. Futures trade 
24 hours also. But some currencies have more than one active session. So, for example, if you take the Japanese yen, the Australian dollar, British pound, the euro, usually these guys have a US session and some other session depending on which country it is. And those are usually called European session or Asian session. And of course, each currency will, uh, each currency pair will uh, behave differently based on that. So today we will tackle the British pound USD. So here I mark, so this is the British pound USD dollar. This is the futures and this is five minutes. And I highlighted the Asian session and you can see the Asian session I highlighted from, this is the exchange time. So this is central time. So 8 p.m. till 3 a.m. Now, of course, this is not fixed in stone and you can change this. I'm just describing the concept. So this is the session between 8 p.m. to 3 a.m. Central Standard Time because this is the futures in uh, CME. This is the high. And of course, this is the low. So when you take this session and then uh, you take the high and the low and then you can take the breakout uh, to the upside and the breakdown to the downside. So this is the new variation. It is this time window taking another session where the instrument is active to mark the high and the low and then trade off that high and low instead of waiting for the opening range in the daytime session, which should be somewhere around here, around 8.30 a.m. So in strategic one, this is Algo Wizard. I built a variable to record that high and low. So what I did is when the bar time is 3 a.m. This is this bar. Of course, you can change this. Like I mentioned, this is uh, extremely optimizable and you can do whatever you like based on the currency you trade or based on the instrument you're trading. So here I mark 3 a.m. And I just added a variable and you can add the variables over here. So I added Asian session high, Asian session low. This is a double variable. Initialize that zero. Once you have that, then it will be populated here. And I set the high, the highest high of the past 96 bars. Now, why 96 bars? Because here the I am trading the five minute bar. So if I'm building this on five minute bar, then each hour has 12 five minute bars. And then if I'm doing the window over eight hours, then I just multiplied by eight and this is 96. So that's why this is 96. Of course, if you're doing this on 15 minutes, then of course, then you need to multiply by uh, four. This is the session high and then the session low, exactly same thing, except now I'm looking for the lowest low for the past 96 bars. So now I marked this window, marked the highest high, assigned it to a variable, the lowest low, assigned it to a variable. Also, I reset those variables at 3 p.m. because I don't want to trade after 3 p.m. Then once that variable is assigned, then we can easily come back here. So when the close closes above the Asian, Asian session high, that means when the close of five minute bar closes above this level, then we will go long. So I'm gonna add this Asian session does not equal to zero because remember I'm resetting this as zero. So I don't wanna trade after five. Of course, even those two, you can program them in many different ways. So depending on your trading platform on how good you are in programming, you can still achieve the same target that I just did probably because I did it already. You can do it at least in five, six, ten other ways. So this is not a fixed in stone. This is just illustrating the concept of how you can do this because obviously you can apply this to many other strategies. Range. So after exactly when it's calculated at 3 a.m. So I'll take the signals between 3 a.m. and 12 p.m. So once we are here, I have the high and low. I will keep trading the high and low until 12 p.m. And my exit is end of day, which is, this is 11.55. Of course, you know, currencies and next day at 5 p.m. But again, you, you were editing our own thing. I want to exit at midnight Eastern Standard Time because I'm trading Eastern Standard Time. Of course, you can keep this trade till next day and you have stop loss and profit. So you can see many, many variations.
The point again is to illustrate the time window instead of looking for the first five minutes of the opening or the first hour of the opening, we're looking at a totally different window depending on some other session that we didn't see yet. We just woke up in the morning. This is calculated based on last night activity. And this is a strategy. And let's check to see if the code is behaving properly. And we can see that uh, this is the highest high and the lowest low of that window. And we can see when we break out uh, then we go long and uh, let's see next trade same thing we break out the high we go long the strategy is a losing strategy because you know it's only ten dollars per trade and this is no commission so obviously we are losing money well the strategy it looks bad of course but we can still make it better by adding stop loss uh, profit targets based on atr and we can uh, actually add filters to the entry where we enter based on volatility or based on some other pattern. The idea here is to implement the time window of the Asian session or the European session into your trading. So that will give you a unique perspective on your entry because most traders will enter based on some price action that happened today in today's market, today's session. And with futures and currencies, you have the luxury uh, to have the uh, Asian or European, or European session integrated into your uh, strategy. Also, actually, some stocks like, you know, pop uh, popular stocks like, let's say, Nestle and uh, Baidu, for example. Uh, these popular stocks have European or Asian session and uh, the U.S. session. So, again... Although they are heavily arbitrated and you will not find uh, arbitration opportunity, but still you will find the previous session activity affect the U.S. session activity. And also, one more thing, it's sometimes the U.S. session activity affects the Asian session activity. So actually you can take the U.S. window and use the high of the low of the U.S. window and trade the Asian uh, counterpart based on those high and low. Okay, so you can see here, I just changed the time window. So I shifted this by one hour. So, and at four, I'm getting the high and the low, um, and I'm already a little better, so. And also by simply adding a, maybe a hundred pips, because profit targets usually works well with intraday. Uh, 531 yeah so yeah so this is already also better so you can see of course you know the variations are limitless yes profit target stop loss number of bars and then you can add filters here <laughs> and then you can change the session time but the main idea i want to keep in your head is this you want to find a window other than your regular session window to trade uh, the breakout of it. Of course, even then, once you settle on the high and the low, so for example, you can say the high plus, let's say ATR of 20 bars times two, and that will take care of some false breakout. So really opening rate breakout is a huge part of any trader's portfolio and you should incorporate it, but you should not follow the original one. You should uh, add some unique features to it like uh, we mentioned, uh, trading a different windows, high, low, and of course, adding uh, some uh, variations to the high and deducted it from the low, adding profit targets, stop loss, changing the number of bars to exit. Uh, so play with it until you find some unique strategy and uh, strategy Quantex. All uh, data mining packages are built for this kind of stuff because you can, you know, throw at it <laughs> as many combinations as you like and then find the robust ones and then use that in your portfolio. I actually get many times asked about the strategies that I built and all these, you can ask about them in the Discord server through the Patreon link down below. As always, I'm open to all questions regarding this or any finance questions, crypto. I welcome all comments also. You can do that below this video or directly through email. And as always, good luck with your investing, good luck with your trading. Stay safe and I'll see you soon.